Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you the basics of the very popular computer vision library OpenCV. OpenCV is originally written in C++, but we are going to have a look at how you can use it with Python. Okay, so uh, OpenCV is very very popular these days and uh, the, the, web, the main website of OpenCV is opencv.org and as you can see there are uh, AI courses that are provided by the opencv.org and you can enroll in those and they might be good I don't I actually don't know but um, the one thing that I'm going to show you is the main documentation and uh, it says a bit of history about the opencv library in here and uh, you can see that uh, OpenCV has a modular structure. So we have some core functionality, image processing, video analysis, object detection, uh, video input output uh, and analysis as well. And yeah, the, the library is open source. The source code is on GitHub if you wanna check it out. And there are Python bindings that are also available on GitHub. And let me just start by opening a, symbol, a single notebook in Google Co-op. I'm going to check the runtime. We're running Python 3. And let's start by importing the OpenCV library as well as some other uh, helper libraries that we're going to need in this video. So the OpenCV library is located into a package called cv2 for some historical reasons and this is the main package of the opencv library in python i'm going to also import matplotlib numpy seaborn And I'm going to use the RC params from pwap. Next, I'm going to make sure that the plotting is in white into the notebook and set a style using Seaborn and configure the, the default figure size because we're going to display a lot of pictures or images in this one so we we would love to have some default figure sizes in here and it's going to be 12 by 10 all right let me clear this up and run this cell uh, you can see that the co-op notebook is connecting and for the purposes of this video i'm going to use a sample image and I'm going to download it using gdown. It's on my Google Drive, so you can do the same. And you can see that the, the image is downloaded. And here it is. It's really a large image. And it contains a snail. Okay, so this will be the image that we're going to use in this video. Let me start by loading the image into uh, using OpenCV and we're going to do that using cv.imread. Unfortunately, as you can uh, already, uh, as I've already told you, OpenCV is written in C++ and the Python bindings are just that, just bindings and uh, you can you can see that the most of the functions are very uh, have very cryptic parameters and it's a bit hard to get started with the library but once you know the quirks of it you will get better with it okay let's start by reading the image and i'm going to use im read from the opencv package and I'm going to specify a file name snail.jpg and I'm going to specify a flag which is going to 
require that the image is loaded using colors. So the first thing that you can do is have a look at the image itself and this is just an array. So the next thing that I'm going to show you is that the array has a shape, of course, very similar to uh, NumPy arrays and this is in fact a NumPy array. And from the shape you can see that we have something that is free and we have two other numbers. One of those is the height and the other is the width and this is the number of color channels. So we have RGB and the width and height. So, but they are actually reversed. So it's height, width and channels. And you can easily print out those. And these are the dimensions of our image. So let me start, uh, let me continue with showing actually the image using PyPlot. And we are going to use ImShow in here. And I'm going to display the image. And something strange is happening in here. You can see that the actual image wasn't that blue. Yeah, the colors in here were actually pretty normal for a snail, but this snail that we've loaded is actually very blue. The reason for this is that the channels are in somewhat strange order. There are blue, green and red as opposed to RGB or red, green, blue. So you have to use OpenCV to do some pre-processing before showing the image. And this can be done using the OpenCV method CVT color. And in here you can specify CV dot color BGR from blue, green, red to RGB, which is the format that PyPlot expects. And here is our snail in the correct colors. One other thing that you can do is, uh, oh, by the way, uh, I'm sorry, and this is Toby. So this snail has a name and his name is Toby. So remember that. If you wanna read the story of Toby, you should go to the link in the video that I'm going to post into the description down below. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to show you is how you can turn this image into a grayscale image. And to do that, I'm going to paste the thing that I've done already. And I'm going to use another variable in here. And I'm going to convert from BGR to gray. And if I just print out this or show this, you're going to see that again, the coloring is incorrect. I can have a look at the shape of the gray image. And you can see that we don't have any color channels. So this, this is a bit strange. And we have to specify another parameter in here and specify that uh, to matplotlib that we are actually displaying a gray image or an image without color channels. So the, there it is. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to show you is how can you save an image. You can do that using cv.imwrite you first specify the path to it. And I'm going to save this gray version of Toby. And this returns true if everything is done successfully. And I can show you the image. So we make sure that this is actually, yeah, it is grayscaled image. So this is perfect. You can save any, uh, color channels using imwrite in here.
Next, I'm going to use a uh, define a little helper function that is uh, using. Let me just do this here. And yeah, the next thing that I'm going to show you is how you can resize an image. So this one, as you can see, it has it's really actually really large for our purposes. So I'm going to do some resizing or show you how you can do some resizing. But first I'm going to paste in a helper function that is called show image. And I'm just using imshow in here and CVT cover to do uh, the pre-processing steps that we've already done. So it's a bit easier to show an image using pipeotlib. Okay, so the resizing step. Actually resizing with OpenCV is really easy and I'm going to start by creating a new image and I'm going to call in cv.resize or cv2 and I'm going to pass in the image and the size which is a tuple containing the width let me do this width and height and the width is going to be 128 with a height of 80 so I'm going to specify those in this tuple in here and I'm going to specify an interpolation parameter which is going to be inter manco 4 so this interpolation algorithm is going to be the primary driver of how this image is downscaled or resized. So now that we have the resized image, I'm going to run this cell and show the result. Here is our resized snail and you can see that this image is much much lower resolution. And let me just go ahead and change this number here because we are actually very zoomed in so those images should be running should be shown in much less detail and let me rerun the notebook okay so the next thing that i'm going to show you is how you can crop an image so you can cut out a part of it. You can see that our original snail, which is this one, has a lot of white space around it. So I would love to get Toby only in the center of the picture and not much extra space in it. So we can do that using just some array manipulation because you might already understand as i've already told you the images are actually just numpy arrays and here we can use uh, array slicing to get just these values for x and y's and i'm going to show you the result and these va values are found by just trial and error Here it is, Toby is now much well presented into this image and let me continue with doing some rotation of Toby. Okay, so you can use r image rotation for a lot of things and you can fix rotation or maybe just do rotation and uh, actually OpenCV has a rotate method but this method is not doing a very good job of rotating images and it, you have you have to specify only uh, angles that are divisible by 90% I believe so uh, an code by Adrian Rosebrock which is the founder of pyimagesearch.com uh, has a very good method which uh, or function which call which he calls rotate bound and I'm going to just paste this one in here and you can see it's pretty lengthy 
but still uh, this method accepts or function accepts an image and an angle at which we want to rotate the image and let me start by running this and showing you an example of what it does and I'm going to walk you through it image and we want to let's say 15 degrees to rotate Toby at 15 degrees let me just st stick in the cropped version of Toby okay so you can see that Toby is now rotated let me rotate him on the other way okay so Toby is now doing some hill climbing I guess and let me go back to the to the function itself the first thing that we are doing is getting the height and the width of the image next we're get, getting the center points so this will be the point right around here or somewhere in here and then we are computing using sinus and cosinus uh, sorry we're getting a rotation matrix so this rotation matrix is giving us a way to compute how much we should rotate the bounds of the image at, uh, as well and we are doing the rotation and translation in here as you can see and then we're using warp affine which is a function provided by OpenCV and it says that it applies an affine transformation to an image so this is some sort of transformation that is uh, basically changing the way that this image is shown to us I'm not I'm not really sure what warp affine or affine transformation really is so the result is returned from this affine transformation and you get the result so if you want to rotate uh, an image I suggest you go and check out this blog post which will be included as a link and you might actually get a better understanding of what warp affine is and the rotation matrix because i don't really know okay so the next thing that i'm going to show you how is how you can do boring and boring an image is something that you see a lot of the time when uh is when it is mostly done on backgrounds or image backgrounds and for this purpose I'm go and for the purpose of this video I'm going to download another image which is again stored on Google Drive and here I'm going to you can see that the image is called jim.jpg and I'm going to read in the image And I'm going to specify that we want the color from the image too. I'm going to take the height and the width of the image and use the resize method. To scale it down. And I'm going to actually divide it by two the width and the height and finally I'm going to show you the result or the image itself here is the image and for those of you that hopefully or probably know what this image is what this gym is this is the hybrid performance gym where Steffi Cohen and other guys and girls are working out which is which looks like a pretty impressive gym to me at least so Toby wanted to create an image of himself on top of this gym image but he found out that maybe he should bore out the background so he should be the star of the show so let me show you how you can actually bore this uh, image so that the background is nicely presented when we place Toby on top of this one.
Okay, so the the thing that we're going to use is cv dot Gaussian blur, and this says that it blurs an image using the Gaussian filter. So you can go ahead and check the documentation for this one as well. I'm not really that into uh, all of the parameters and all the functions that the Gaussian filters can do for you. But here is an example of how you can use it. Uh, this one requires a kernel length. So the kernel is basically something or some like, something like a patch or some sub matrix or a smaller matrix that you apply and it's a parameter for the Gaussian blur uh, and this actually is uh, applied both through the horizontal axis and the vertical axis so you're going to see in a bit how you can how we will use this the first parameter I'm going to put in here is the image and we're going to do that on the background image then I'm going to specify the kernel for the width and height and I'm going to pass in two other parameters here which are sigma x which again control how this uh, filter is applied and the result is going to be the board background And I'm going to show you the result. So here it is. Let me show you the previous image. And this is the result. So you can see that the the background or the gym is actually very well bored using this Gaussian blur. As the next step, Toby wanted to place himself on top of this background image that is already bored, but he had to actually cut himself out from this image and present himself on top of the gym image. And luckily for us, uh, Toby is very well presented in here because all of the background is actually white. So we can use that to create a threshold or a binary threshold or a binary mask and get everything that is not white in this image and I'm going to show you how we can do this right in here. So we're going to basically find the contours around Toby. So let me go in here and let's do finding contours. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is get the white parts of the image. And I'm going to do that using cv2.threshold and this one just thresholds the values that you are interested in and in our case we are going to be interested in just white values. So this will be 2555 and we are going to inverse the binary threshold so let me execute this and I'll show you the result so the the binary mask is actually based on the gray image that we've passed in, in here and if I get a simple result which should be just white you can see that the values are 255 so the next thing that I'm going to do is uh, basically find the contours in this image and I'm going to use cv.findContours for this. This one accepts the image, the mode in which it is going to be operating. We are just interested in the, the, the external contour of the image. You can also get all the contours that it found but we are not interested in that and uh, we will specify a method of approximation how to get the contour. I'm going to pass in the binary image and cv.reader external and finally I'm going to 
approximate using a chain approximate simple method. So let's execute this. And next I'm going to show you the actual contours on top of the uh, Toby image. So I'm going to make a copy of the cropped version of Toby. And show you the image. But showing you the image uh, will require to use the cv2.draw contours. This requires the contours themselves. Uh, let me just copy and paste this. We want to to draw all of the contours in here. So we're going to specify contour ID minus one. So everything that we pass in. Then I'm going to specify the color, which is going to be just green and the thickness of the contour. It didn't work out that well, so I went back and specified the parameters of those methods in here. And just for the kicks of it, I got the gray image from here, again from the cropped image. And uh, let me execute this and this. So this is the result that I was expecting. Okay, so you can clearly see that Toby is very well outlined in here. And next I'm going to show you how you can create a mask using this. So this will be the first step in placing one image on top of another. So the mask is going to have a dimensions that are equal to the dimensions as the cropped version of Toby. So we can use numpy zeros like and pass in the cropped numpy array. And I'm going to draw the contours on top of this mask. I'm going to pass in the mask, the contours specify that I want every uh, contour to be drawn, use white color and I want that uh, that mask to be filled in. So not just the outer layers but I want everything to be filled in, in here. So now that this is complete let me show you the final mask. So this is the mask that we have and if you've or if you've used Photoshop or something similar you already know that a mask can be used for cutting or cropping an image from another one. So this is what we are going to do next and we are going to do that using cv.bitwise end. So the mask we are going to create the masked snail variable in here, sorry. And I'm going to use again bitwise end. This one computes the conjunction of two arrays and the two arrays are, in this case are going to be the cropped version of Toby. And the next parameter that we're going to pass in is going to be the mask that we're going to use to create the new image. So I'm going to show you the result of that one, pass in the source 1 which is going to be the cropped version of Toby, the source 2 which is again the cropped version of Toby and the mask is going to be the mask that we've just created but I'm going to turn it into a grey image because now it's it has three color channels. CVT color, the same method that we've been using all along. And let me go to a new line in here and this will be color BGR2 gray. All right, so the mask snail is now complete and I'm going to show you the results. So 
so this is pretty much the same version of Toby, but now we have a black background in here. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to do is to place Toby at the right location at the image of the gym background. So if you know the method of trees, uh, this is a very good spot where you can basically place an object of interest. So I'm going to place Toby right here and I'm going to create a new mask for that. And uh, this mask is going to be again filled in with something like zeros and it's going to have the size of the board background. And again, I'm going to use NumPy indexing. To place Toby at the spot that I've already showed you. So I'm going to specify the X and the Y coordinates and use the width and the height of Toby, actually. So if I show you the result, this is Toby at the correct position and at the correct size. So next up, I'm going to finally show you how you can place Toby on top of the gym image. For this purpose, I'm going to use the CV threshold again and get an alpha channel based on the black values in here. So CV2 dot threshold and I'm going to use a source image of the new mask but I'm going to turn it into gray version not three channel version. Okay, so this is the first parameter. Next, I'm going to specify a threshold, which is going to be zero for black. The max possible value is going to be 255, five, sorry. And again, I'm going to use binary threshold for this one. Okay, so this will basically be the alpha channel. So everywhere where is black in here, we want to make it alpha uh, the opacity to be 100%. So next I'm going to take the channels from the image or the color channels using cv2.split from the new mask. And finally I'm going to do an image that is based on the new Toby that have an alpha channel that has an alpha channel. And I'm going to use opencv dot or cv2 dot merge and I'm going to specify the channels blue, green, red and the alpha channel. So this will give us an image that has four color channels and the last one is going to be just the alpha. Okay, so I'm going to take the board background and do a copy of it. And then I'm going to apply the alpha on top of the uh, actually on top of the final image. So for this purpose, I'm going to specify two variables. I'm basically taking the alpha alpha channel values from the the image of Toby and the mask and applying the alpha on top of this image. So basically what we're going to do is to apply alpha or uh, reduce the opacity or sorry increase the opacity where it's black so we can put this image on top of this one. All right, so next 
I'm going to just iterate over each channel and just copy and paste the alpha for each channel. And this is a bit convoluted, so I'm going to just copy and paste it. And this is basically a hack that I found on Stack Overflow to apply an alpha channel uh, over two images that are stacked on top of each other. So now I'm going to show the result. And yeah, Toby is very well placed on top of the gym image. Toby have heard that it was great to be authentic in our age, in our world. So he decided to paint his eyes blue. Unfortunately, he didn't have eyes. Uh, he didn't have eyes, but yeah, maybe he can do something about this. So let me show you how you can draw just circles using OpenCV. So the, the thing that I'm going to show you now is how you can uh, place two bull circles here and here. So Toby can be happy with his new eyes, I guess. I'm going to take the final image and make a copy of it because I don't want to ruin this one, of course. And I'm going to specify the eye coordinates of the both eyes. The X and Y values for each or the centers of each circle that we're going to draw. And for each eye, let me just run this and check if everything is good so far, and it is. I'm going to create a new image, use cv.circle, and this one accepts the image itself, center points, uh, center point, x and y, radius, color, and thickness, and the thickness, if we specify a thickness of zero, it means that the circle will be filled, so this is what we want in here. the radius and the color is going to be blue of course so this is but recall that OpenCV works with blue green and red so this will be the first value which will specify the blue thing and the thickness is going to be minus one radius is not defined oh sorry I'll specify a radius of 30 pixels and show you the image Yeah, Toby now has blue eyes, I guess. Okay, finally, I'm going to show you how you can draw some text. Because Toby was determined to create his own gym brand and he had to have a special hashtag that he applies to every one of his image, of course. So, uh, fortunately for us, we are going to take the final image make a copy of this one of course because this is the best we've done so far and just use cv2.put text to draw some text on top of this one and this takes as you can see the image the text the origin point of the the text font face font scale color thickness a lot of stuff so let me start by passing in the image and specifying the text, which will be the new hashtag of the Tobis brand, which is going to be Jim Snail, of course. And next I'm going to specify the point at which the text will be uh, drawn. And this is again found by trial and error, at least for this example. This is the X and Y coordinates of the text. For a font face, let me just remove this. For a font face, we're going to use cv2.font Hershey simplex. So these are the possible fonts, I guess. And I'm going to use something for here. 
For the font scale, we're going to use eight because I want the text to be really large. And for a color, we're going to specify green, of course, because Toby loves nature. And the thickness of the text is going to be uh, relatively large. So now that this one is done, I'm going to show you the result actually here. Okay, there you have it. Now Toby is placed on top of the gym board background. He has blue eyes and he has his unique new coding brand hashtag on top of it. So this is pretty much it. Thanks guys for watching. I'll link in the into the description the source code, the Jupyter notebook and the tutorial based on this video that I've already that I've presented to you. Please like, share, subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.